Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal. I hope you are well and you're not too disappointed after yesterday's frustrating draw at Burnley. Obviously I did give my player ratings video after the game but I thought I'd pop on this morning and talk a little bit more in depth about that match, some of the things that have come from it um, and uh, why Arsenal need to improve on really because let's face it, they do need to improve. The league table doesn't lie, um, although I still think there are certainly good signs of improvement for Arsenal and even yesterday's game I thought was an indicator of that as well even if the result didn't go their way um, but I'm still seeing signs of Arsenal certainly heading in the right direction after what has been a horrible season and a not good enough season. But certainly since the turn of the year, I do see signs that Arsenal are heading in the right direction. So I'll talk about that a little bit um, uh, when I desperately look for some positives. Because let's face it, it's Sunday morning. We've thrown two points away. We want to try and find some positives as well um, than just going over the negatives. And the negatives, really, the big negatives are the wasted chances for Arsenal. We've seen it cost them plenty of times now. Um, recently certainly individual errors and wasted chances it's it's just a tale of Arsenal's uh, season recently not the start of the season the first half of the season when chances were few and far between so that is another of the positives is the fact is the chances are coming now and that's where you're seeing the sort of numbers heading in the right direction for Arsenal and hopefully you would think at some stage you're going to start putting these chances away and you're going to win games fairly comfortably um, but it didn't happen yesterday you know they should have been out of sight before the whole Xhaka incident um they weren't, and that's what they ended up paying the price for. That's why I don't think there's any need for any excuses today. Yes, they, were, they should have had a penalty. I'm absolutely convinced by that. Um, yes, they made a horrible error um, that made a mistake that led to the equaliser. But I think mainly the big fault of Arsenal's performance yesterday was the fact that they missed the chances they created because they should have won that game 3-4-5 even, rather than just uh, having the single goal from Aubameyang early on. And that's the big um, regret, I think, for Arsenal this morning. You look at Saka's chance at 1-0 in the first half when he went through, should have scored. He had another chance soon after that when Aubameyang played him in and his touch completely let him down when he was on one-on-one, -on -one basically, and the chance, was, chance went away. Aubameyang had another one in the first half that he sort of slashed out wildly. Um, and uh, then obviously we saw in the second half Pepe missing that absolute sitter just after he came on. Maybe it was too early for him, um, but even so, I know you can't really excuse that miss because to miss a ball completely from six yards out after having it put on a plate for you, it's not good enough. Even the one that hit the bar, I think you've got to score that as well. You don't give the defender an opportunity to get the block. Uh, he sort of went back to where the, the side of the defenders, that the two defenders were at rather than where the goal was uh, goal was open. I think he had that been on his left foot, he definitely would have scored that one. Um, even at the end, we saw uh, Orba have a shot blocked um, before it reached the goalkeeper. Sabios is one that hit the post. Of, I think it was Saka before that who had the chance. I mean, there were so many for Arsenal to win that game really, really comfortably. And that's, for me, the big regret from yesterday is that they didn't take those chances. Because had they done that, it would have been a really comfortable away win, following on from the comfortable away win last weekend. And uh, the sort of momentum that was being built would have continued and that's the big um the regret for me and Mikel says here says look there were open chances we created 1v1 situation cutbacks into the box we hit the bar hit the post we had shots blocked when the goalkeeper was already beaten um when you come here you want to be and you want to be one of the top teams you have to come here and win the game comfortably we haven't done it because of the chances uh, we missed because we gave a goal to the opponent and because you need decisions and we didn't get them and yes look that we've talked long and hard about that I'm sure we all have since that game yesterday whether or not that was a handball I think it was absolutely blatant handball pretty much the majority of everyone I've spoken to agrees with me Mikel Arteta certainly agrees with me you guys certainly agree with me judging by the comments on social media there are a few that don't um who I've seen a couple of referees talk about it say it wasn't a clear and obvious error but I'm sorry that's a handball the, the hand was out stretched out um it wasn't by his body it was in an alien position. I said there was clear daylight between the arm and the body and it stopped Nicolas Pepe because he was going through. He just knocked it past him, was going down the right-hand side of him and it stopped him doing that. So for me, that's an absolute blatant penalty. It's another example of really poor officiating. Um, they got it right with the second one because that wasn't a handball. It clearly hit the shoulder. But the first one, they absolutely got it wrong. And, um, you know... I it hurt Arsenal because that would have given them a penalty and you would have expected a Bamiyang to put that one away and they would have got the three points from it. But as I said, I still think now looking back on it a day later, 24 hours later, whatever it is, it's the missed chances that really cost Arsenal. And that's where they absolutely have to improve because if they do that, then they're going to start getting the points they need to really move up the table very, very quickly. 
Obviously, it was another mistake for Granit Xhaka yesterday. It's an eighth individual error leading directly to a goal from him since he joined. No one else in England has made that many mistakes leading to goals since he arrived. Um, I think we all know that Granit is prone to that. Look, he's been very, very good since Christmas, I th certainly since the Burnley game, actually, when he got sent off uh, at the Emirates. I think he's been really, really good. And um, Arsenal's upturn in form really has coincided with Xhaka's excellent form so I'm not going to sit here and absolutely hammering it hammering him it was a mistake they happen but they happen a little bit too often with Granite and that's the thing it's something that he has to cut out but given his age now and how senior he is as a player you wonder can he cut those mistakes out of his game they're just little moments when he just his head seems to go and he does something stupid and it costs Arsenal and it's cost him before and it certainly cost him yesterday because Burnley weren't looking threatening at all at that point and um, Arsenal are in complete control of the game. Fair play to Granite. He has apologised. He took on, went on social media, said, I hold my hands up for their goal and I'm sorry for the mistake. That's football and right now I feel just as frustrated as all of you. And I'm sure he does. You know, Granite's a very emotional player, emotional man. He knows he made an error. Um, I think a lot of people criticising Bert Leno. For me, it was this one's down to, to Xhaka. For me, I don't think Leno really did too much wrong. It's the way Arsenal play. He passed it out. Xhaka played the first time ball out wide to Chambers. I think it was. He was in oceans of space. But why he decided to take a touch, that's what's caused himself some problems. But even then, the pass just isn't on to Chambers. So don't try it. Knock it back to Leno and let him clear his lines. Why he attempted to bend a ball around Chris Wood with his wrong foot in that confined space. I don't know what was going through his head or what he was thinking. Um... But he has made an apology. He has uh, accepted full. And now I think it's time to move on because Xhaka, as I said, since Christmas has been very, very good. And um, Arsenal are going to need him between now and the end of the season. There's a couple of really big games coming up now for Arsenal. I mean, I think yesterday, which I'll talk about a little bit later on... Um, actually, I'll talk about it now. I think it basically does end their chance of European football via the Premier League yesterday. Um, I think they'll leave the... They'll end... Or they could end this weekend 10 points off the top six 12 points off the top four I asked Mikel that after the game I said does it um, end your realistic chance of the Euro European qualification by the Premier League he said well it's really complicated at the moment it's true that the feeling that I have the way we are playing we can win any game but as well you've mentioned before if you're giving something to your opponent obviously the game is all the time on the line this is where we are in my opinion and this is where the biggest margin of improvement but anything can happen so he's not totally ruling it out but I think he knows now that it's increasingly difficult for Arsenal to get get into Europe via the Premier League and that means it's Europa League or bust really in terms of European qualification next season and look Arsenal need to be in Europe next season there's no doubt about that they need the money they need the prestige it's going to be a real real blow to the club especially at a time when finances are so stretched because of the pandemic um to miss out on Europe is going to be a huge hammer blow to Arsenal and their hopes of really rebuilding the squad in the summer, which they want to do. Um, so these games against Olympiacos coming up now, absolutely massive for Arsenal, for Arteta, for Edu, for everyone, really. Um, so yeah, no room for error on that one. Right, let's talk about some positives now because look, it's been a pretty negative start to this video and it's hard not to be negative after a result like that because you feel like Arsenal have absolutely kicked themselves in the in the teeth and thrown two points away, which they have. But I still think there are positives. I said it at the start of this video. I think the numbers are certainly suggesting that Arsenal are heading in the direction, right direction. Whereas at the start of the season, they were getting outshot, outplayed, not creating chances. That's not happening yesterday. I mean, they were well on top yesterday when you look at um, the stats and it was just a case of those missed chances. So I think we are seeing things moving in the right direction since Christmas. I thought last night's, yesterday's performance was another indicator of that. Um, and so there are things to be positive about. And I think one of those is Pablo Mari, who I think is an absolutely fantastic defender. Every time I see Pablo Mari, I like him more and more. I thought he was great yesterday against Burnley, who are not an easy side to be a centre-back against. They're so direct. You know, Chris Wood is a horrible centre-forward to play against. And I thought Mary coped with it really well. I think he won nine aerial du duels yesterday. No one else won more. You know, all those balls that were pumped into the box, Mary dealt with really, really fantastically. 70 passes, only Xhaka played more. 61 of those su were successful. You know, he's all, he's he knows how to bring the ball out from the back. He reads the ball really well. He's, the amount of interceptions he makes cuts out the danger before they get to players. Um, you know, I think he's a really, really good defender. I think there's a very strong argument for, at the moment, Pablo Mari being Arsenal's best centre-back. Obviously, it was another game without Gabriel yesterday. Um, I think he's certainly having a little bit of a breather after that really positive start to the season. I think his performances dipped 
obviously before the injury and before COVID and everything like that. And since he's come back from that absence, when I have seen him play, he's looked pretty shaky. I'm not surprised he's not playing absolutely regularly at the moment. And I think when you look at the performances of Pablo Mari, certainly on the left side of that centre-back partnership, I think Mari's the strongest option that Arsenal have right now. I think he looks like a top, top defender. And for the money that Arsenal paid for him, he's looking like a real, real bargain. Obviously, there's still a long way to go and we haven't actually seen Mari play that much football yet. You still want to see him play for a whole full season before you can totally judge him in terms of how good he is. But I think Arsenal have managed to get themselves a really good centre-back with the Spaniard. And given his age, he could be around for a fair while yet. So that's really, really positive. Um, and so that's, you know, although I don't want to be, to I don't want to be totally completely negative after yesterday's results i want to look for some positives i always want to try and bring some sort of balance to these videos so yes there are reasons to be disappointed after yesterday's result but i certainly think there are still reasons to be positive for next season as well and i'm already looking at next season and yeah that may be a defeat if defeatist attitude yes the europa league is still to play for and that's huge for arsenal but still right now i just i'm all i'm already looking forward to next season because i can just you know this season's been so difficult um and it's been a bit of a wasted season for Arsenal. I think that those two months or three months really up to December absolutely killed their chances of doing anything well. But since then, since we've really seen Arteta's plans emerge and the 4-2-3-1 become a system that Arsenal are playing week in, week out, no matter who's available, what players are in it, we've just seen such, a, such an improvement in the form, even though there's still disappointing results like yesterday and the individual errors are costing Arsenal. They did in the defeat against Wolves when they were, like yesterday, in complete control and then they managed to throw that game away, albeit for a very dodgy VAR decision uh, for the red card for David Luiz. Um, against Aston Villa, the defeat there as well, just another stupid individual error that left them on the back foot early on. Can't afford to be doing that. Even the game against Leicester last week, and fair play to them, they battled back and they recovered from that. It was another individual error that cost them a goal against Leicester at the start of that game. And it's those things, if they can cut them out, and these, you know, these are things that aren't, it's not so much coachable, it's players. You've just got to stop doing these stupid things. And if you can cut those out and then your strikers start taking their chances or the, the forwards start taking their chances, you know, it's not going to take much for Arsenal to improve quite drastically, I think. So I still think there are signs that there are reasons to be positive to when you're looking towards next season. And I just want to see a strong end to this campaign now. Keep this upward trajectory that we're seeing since Christmas. Try and do something special in the Europa League and then really knuckle down, kick on and get going again for next season. A couple of things before I go on this one. A little bit on Cedric Suarez. I've been getting a lot of questions about him, why he wasn't involved yesterday. He was just rested. There's no injury for Suarez. He was actually at the game. He was just sitting down to the right of us uh, in the stand. He was watching the match with Alex Runison. So there's no injury for Suarez. Mikel saying before the game that you need, you know, there's so many games. I think it's four games in nine days at the moment. So he's sort of bringing people in, bringing people out, letting some have a breather. And then they'll be coming back in on Thursday. So I'm fully expecting Cedric Suarez to be back involved for the Olympiacos game. There is no injury there. Um, and then I'll quickly go over my player ratings again. If you haven't seen the video yesterday, um, Pablo Mari, unsurprisingly, was my man of the match, given I've just waxed lyrical about him right now. I thought he was excellent, um, but I'll get to him in a minute. In terms of the goalkeeper, Bert Leno, I thought he made two really important saves in the second half where Arsenal could have, in fact, lost the game had it not been for those saves from Dwight McNeil and Chris Wood. He gets a seven for me. Uh, Callum Chambers, first start since December 19th, thought did fairly solid, not great in terms of an attacking threat, didn't really overlap with Saka. And, um, you know, I think Arsenal certainly missed... Bellerin and Cedric in that regard with Chambers playing there but I thought he was fairly solid defensively Chambers he gets a six Mary gets an eight as I've said very very strong performance from Mary for me um, really positive he gets an eight Louise gets a seven Tierney I didn't think he was one of Tierney's best games um, he did still do that really good cutback that um, Pepe should have finished off late on he gets a six for me Granite Xhaka I didn't think was awful by any means but because that error was so so big and so costly I'm gonna have to give ran it a five Thomas Party I thought was good first half he was really running the show played a big part in the first goal did tire in the second half not surprising when you consider that's his first start since coming back from injury it was no surprise to see him replaced by Danny Ceballos midway through the second half Party gets a seven Saka rare off day for Bukayo Saka he should have scored in the first half should have scored a couple really in the first half it just didn't quite happen to him that's allowed when you're 19 and you're as good as and you're having as good a season as Saka so he gets a six Odegaard I thought was pretty average Odegaard a little bit disappointed with him yesterday did get on the ball a lot but he didn't really do too much with it uh he gets a six from me Willian not 
that didn't hit the heights he hit against Leicester, but still got another assist. Highest Ars- uh, highest number of Premier League assists for Arsenal now this season for Willian. Um, I think he's in the top 10 for Premier League assists in the whole league as well now, uh, which is quite surprising given how much he's struggled so far since he joined from Chelsea. He gets a seven for me and Orba, not his best performance, but I'll give him a seven because he got the goal. Um, but yeah, he gets a seven. I'm not going to mark the substitutes because I didn't get any of made too much of an impact after coming on. So that's about it for me for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do enjoy your Sunday. Don't think too much about that Granite Xhaka error. Uh, and we'll go again from Monday morning. Obviously, Arsenal back in action on Thursday in that big, big Europa League game in Athens against Olympiakos. I believe Mikel's press conference for that is going to be Wednesday morning. So I will be covering that as always. And... Um, and uh, bringing you any reaction to it as and when it happens. And to all of you guys watching this around the world, or certainly in the UK, like me, who have kids and you've been homeschooling for God knows how long now, and you're going to see them go back to school tomorrow. You did it, guys. Well done. Fair play. And uh, I'm sure you, like me, are going to probably give yourself a little smile when you see them walk into that school tomorrow. So well done on that one. All right, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and I'll speak to you very, very soon. Goodbye.